Welcome to part two of the SQL, how to configure the SQL adapter. In this second series, I'm going to show you how to uh, configure a join between the SQL objects uh, over to the Active Directory objects. So the use case here is uh, my identity may live in both places. So take Larry and Mike. We both exist here in Active Directory. So you can see my account here and you can see Larry's account here. So we both we, we live primarily in Active Directory. That's our primary uh, anchor object. However, there's some data out here in the SQL database that I might want to present on my Active Directory object. So I don't want two identities being surfaced through VIS. I want one, but I want to pull data from more than one place. So maybe cost center and department number. I want to bring and add and make a part of the object shown here. Because you can see cost center and department number are not uh, on my Active Directory object. So let's go ahead and create and, and, and that configuration within VIS. So again, bring up my configuration. You can see I already have my SQL adapter that we set up in part one, connection over to it. Uh, I did create it inside this visa set so that I could do a join. Uh, again, notice also interface wise, we saw before, yellows indicate a warning, reds indicate that some object, uh, or I'm sorry, some feature is uh, disabled. So by the virtue of the red being here, you can see that it's disabled. So join cache in particular um, is, uh, set to red right now it's not being used I'm gonna go ahead and do go here to the join attributes and I'm gonna go create the join so I'm gonna choose you could do it manually but I'm gonna choose one of the newer options which is a join wizard it makes it even easier to cre create and configure a join I'm gonna choose join wizard so what's the object class I'm joining on well my example here it was users in AD and users in SQL so I'm gonna choose user What's the join from? So where, what am I want to join from? I'm going to join from uh, Active Directory. What's my attribute I'm going to join on? And it's going to be Sam account name. So Sam account name, make sure we spell that properly. And go over to SQL. So that's the, uh, the, the visa I'm connecting to. Notice it's showing everything within my visa set. And that's going to be UID. So if the Sam account name is equal to the UID here in SQL, they're one and the same user. That's what we're actually going to join on. Again, you could have this configured on more than one attribute. Most of the time, it's pretty easy to set it up on one. Let's see what the wizard created. So it created uh, the different configurations. One, here's the SQL, there's the UID. You can see that there's the join two is down here. So here's the AD, SAM account name, it's enabled, and it's got the join two. So going from AD over to SQL. All right, we're done. We're going to go ahead and do the save XML. Oops, one other feature. I forgot to come in here, um, and I want to uh, make the change down here in the SQL Visa, and I need to set up some attribute mappings. So I need to configure uh, which ones, actually precedences, I'm sorry. I need to configure which attributes I want to come from the SQL adapter. So I'm going to configure here uh, and choose that cost center attribute precedence. So these are the attributes I want to come out of the uh, SQL database. So there's cost center, choose that one. Then I'm going to set up another precedence and uh, that's going to be department. Spelled that wrong. Department. Now, this would also, and you can see that I'm choosing user here. Now, in this particular case, um, it's precedence saying it's coming from SQL. If I chose one of the attributes that exists in AD, like SN, then it's actually going to use and override what attributes in SQL as opposed to AD. So I'm going to actually go ahead and create one of those as well, and then I'll show you how that would work. So for user, um, and we'll do SN, actually, I guess, yep. And we'll call that SN just so that it's spelled nicely within the interface. There we go. We've got the rest done. I'll do a save and we'll restart the service with our new configuration. So we now have a join over to SQL and we have several attribute presence. So we're pulling cost center, department number, and SN uh, where we've configured the product to say don't use what's in Active Directory for the surname. Use what's authoritative in the HR database, for example. This is my HR test database. So perhaps um, HR has been updated and, and Active Directory didn't get updated with my surname change. So come here to Active Directory. 
we're going to do a refresh. We're going to first come down here to the SQL, and I'm going to do a refresh. Notice two objects are only there now. So out of the SQL database, let's go back over to that, we'll see that Larry and Mike don't show up under the SQL node anymore. And the reason is is because they're joined to their AD object. So only one Mike and one Larry is now surfaced through VIS. Joe Nobody and Jane Only SQL aren't joined to any object in AD. So no object within AD has a SAM account name of only uh, Jane Only SQL. And same with Joe Nobody. So they're unjoined. So they're still showing up under the SQL container. But looking under the employees container of AD and looking at Mike, notice that cost center and department number are now being surfaced. And you can see this extra metadata that this application consumes, and any application can, shows where the data came from. So we can see that this came from the SQL visa, and there's the 33 and the 22 coming out of that database table. And again, it's a real live join. So if I change this to 44, come back over to LDAP Manager, do a refresh, and you'll see that my data is now 44 for cost center. Now, let's take a look at that last example that I mentioned where surname. So here's my uh, surname. Let's just add a couple of P's here to it. We get ranked P, and we take a look with LDAP Manager, and we'll do another refresh. Look at my surname now. It's showing that it's coming in authoritative from a uh, from SQL, rather, not AD. So SN actually exists in both AD and in SQL, that actual attribute. We've instructed VIS to say, yes, it's in both places. Where is it precedence? It's precedent over in the SQL database. So gives you extreme flexibility for you as an administrator to choose where's the data going to be sourced, especially if there's conflicts between it. But in this example here, we're able to bring in cost center department number, making them available to our applications without extending the schema of AD or replicating any data. So extremely powerful feature. Um, there you go. In a few minutes, you've not only created a connection over to a SQL database, but we've also created the join uh, for that as well. Thank you for your time.